Today is Sunday, May 25th, 2014. This is video number five. I feel like I need to keep going with this no matter how hard it is for me to talk about. There's no doubt they got me. They got me pinned down. I haven't been able to get anybody to help. Not even the National Crime Association. <laughs> Not even them. Nobody. Nobody. Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigations. Nobody. There was agent, FBI agent Brad Thompson at the beginning. Well, he acted like he was interested, that he really was going to help one of the most memorable meetings with him is uh, well you know without you there is no cases yes I know that it's no without you there is no case I said yes I know that he repeats it a couple more times he says and I give him the same reply and he says okay what am I saying if I'm dead, they have no case. All their problems, there is no case. All their problems are, are solved. He says, that's right. And I responded with, really, what part of your thinking ever led you to believe that I didn't know that, that I did not understand that? And, uh, he let them take a hold of me that April morning in 2003 my mom screaming from our my balcony patio door seeing the police donning their tear gas equipment you see I had recordings that would send these people to prison and they wanted that package. They didn't want it getting to getting out. And the only way that stopped them from shooting tear gas and firing away, like they did with a kid that was in a building behind me called Suicide Prevention, and they responded with shooting tear gases into his apartment. I mean, no talking with or anything. They just showed up and started shooting off tear gas into the kids. He's just 19, 20 years of age. Nichols was his last name. And you know what I did to stop him? My medical background, so I have a little bit more extensive of a first aid kit, medical kit. I got a syringe, filled it full of water took an IV line, ran it to my arm, put a little blood spot, and told them if they come in here, this is this is filled with Marcaine, which is a deadener, that they come in to come barreling into my apartment. They're gonna have a, this plunger's going down. And that's the only thing that stopped them from doing it that way. But they negotiated their way in. I had the FBI on the line, but evidently that person was probably not the FBI because they do control phone calls going in and out. You know, 
And it's just the way that it, it it just kept going like this. I'd be in the emergency room at Great Plains Hospital in such horrific pain. Horrific pain. And have a doctor come in there and start getting very vulgar and then tell me that he's going to call the police. <laughs> I could. That's amazing. It's amazing that they do this kind of stuff. Dr. Anmar is the one who did it. And when he walked out of that room, I got myself off the table and I grabbed my coat and I made my way to the front doors and got out and I said, God, what do I do, God? What do I do? And all I heard and seen was, run, run. And so I didn't debate it. I took off running. And I'd go so far and I'd have to stop and I'd have to hold my head and fight back the pain and then go a little further, stop and fight, 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 fight the pain. And I was behind this small dealership and I had to stop to try to fight the pain down and I see these police cars zipping up to the hospital. Uh-oh. I made my way to a convenience store, called a taxi. I told him to take the residential roads, but he just had to cross 3rd Street, which is Main and 3rd Street, so the two main streets here in Elk City. And just as he did that, there was a police car and stopped us. And of course, they went to harassing me. But since I didn't do anything, I was able to get my release and I had them take me to my mother's. And my mother took me onto the apartment and as soon as we got there, it was swarming with cop cars. So, we parked in this one small parking area for we're sitting there talking and uh, they're out there on their little foot patrol and they see us they come over to the car and tell us well there's been theft stereo thefts out here and it's been reported and blah 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 of course, we acted like we just, okay, oh, well, well, that's a shame that that's going on. Of course, I'm still, I'm not in good shape. My mom gets me to the, gets me to my apartment. She's sobbing. She's watched so much of this. She's watched them stick needles in me. Starting at the corner of my mouth going this way, you never are to do a trigeminal nerve block while the person is awake. I was able to stop that. There's a lot more. We can never get vehicles fixed. We can't get anything fixed right. And since this ordeal with the hospital, with Great Plains Regional Hospital, feels pretty much like I'm boxed in and, and um, I don't think I might have maybe a couple months more they got me. They certainly got me. I don't think I'm going to make it out of this. <laughs>